Good morning. Did any of y'all hear the music play when I came in? <laughs> I, I don't need an armed escort. I have one here with me. Uh, just let y'all know that things are a little bit easier over here, not quite so uh, flamboyant. And the, uh, is, is y'all's rules chairman coming? He does have a bill. Uh, I wonder if he knows. Well, that's probably the truth, too. I, I went by there at 830, and he was still in bed. Uh, but uh, I, I hope that y'all's rules chairman does like he does me. I have to show up for my bills. And if any of y'all are speaking to him, and I don't know why you would, but uh, it's probably a good idea to tell him that he needs to show up. Okay. Y'all bow with me. Heavenly Father, here we are again asking you to forgive us of our sins, to say thank you for a wonderful day, a wonderful week. Be with us and guide us. Let us, let us be considerate. Let us be compassionate. Watch over us. Keep your hand on us. I ask these things in my Savior's name. Amen. Amen. La ladies and gentlemen, we're going to do things a little bit out of order here this morning. Uh, the, the first thing that I'm going to do is we're going to go into rules committee meeting for a... Uh, resolution Mr. Ramsey has it has to go through the rules committee and then we'll get it on the thing Mr. Ramsey thank you Mr. Chairman um, this is simply a study committee there's been a number of proposals in recent years um, from from horse racing to most recently Chairman Stevens bill that he dropped this week all motivated to to derive uh, new and expanded revenue for the Georgia lottery we believe it would be appropriate for the House to, to take a, uh, to, to study these bills, do a cost-benefit analysis of the bills, um, look at the social and economic considerations around those proposals um, um, through, the, through the course of the off-season and study, and, and study uh, through a House Study Committee. Um, that's simply all this does, Mr. Chairman. I'd be happy to yield for any questions. Ms. Hughley. Well, uh, you can see um, um, Representative Smyre is, is signed the study committee resolution. Representative Evans signed it. We would uh, ultimately the speaker is going to make that decision, but I think it, it would be a study committee to be appropriate for some bipartisan participation. Mr. Ramsey, would you like to make a motion? Uh, I move to pass, Mr. Chairman. Uh, second, all those in favor signify by aye. Any opposed? Okay. Now we'll go back into rules. If I could, Tyler, come up here. Y'all push your seats back and stand up here. With you. Oh. We're having a photo walk. <laughs> <laughs> Tyler leaves us today, and he's been the best one I've had. Oh. Don't worry. Don't worry. Yeah. <laughs> he, he is in the military and college, and he gets to go to Fort Polk, Louisiana. My God. <laughs> You know, that's kind of like, uh, there's a place down here in South Georgia called Stewart. What are the best? What are the best? <laughs> <laughs> the bugs and the heat are worse <laughs> Pope, <laughs> Pope, Pope, than they are there. And I'd like to, he, he would like to have a picture of the, the group of us that sit up here and act like we know something. <laughs> <laughs>
just, they just have to tell me. <laughs> well, if that's what it takes to get a kiss, heck, I'm leaving too. <laughs> All right, uh, Ms. Clark. Thank you, Mr. Chairman and ladies and gentlemen of the committee. I bring for your consideration House Resolution 618, which is under open rule, second from the top. And this is a study committee, as you remember Chairman Cooper saying Georgia is an aging state. We have a variety of services for our seniors, but few save the state as much money as do adult day services. Mostly, these are Alzheimer's patients, and they're in this day service, and the committee would examine coordination of services, reimbursement policies that are all over the place, what models work best in Georgia and in other states, and the reason for recent decreases in use of the programs with parallel increases in institutionalization. And thank you. Uh, again, this is uh, House Resolution 618. No questions. Thank you, Mr. Kelly. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, members of the committee. Under modified open, House Resolution 686 uh, simply encourages uh, our, our United States Congress to put forth uh, tax reforms that would ultimately result in a flatter, fairer, and simpler uh, tax code, uh, mainly for the purpose of trying to reduce some of the compliance costs that uh, hamper our small businesses. It costs our small businesses 67 percent. Uh, more than it does our large businesses, just to try to comply and keep up with su our such uh, our complicated tax code. Any questions, Mr. Kelly? No questions. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Coomer. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'm asking for Senate Bill 138, the Child Welfare Reform Bill, came out of Judiciary uh, Committee last night, and I don't see Chairman Willard. He's probably actually carrying that file to the clerk's office right now to get us uh, on this committee. So, Senate Bill 138. It's, it's not on anything. I, it's the only time he can I know how many for. times we'll have to come and ask, so I'm just, you know, going to put one in the bank right now. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. <laughs> Mr. Pack. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I bring before, before you House Resolution 724, which is the fourth Resolution down from top, modified open, creating the House Study Committee on Cybersecurity and Privacy. Any questions, Mr. Peck? Thank you. Thank you. Ms. Anderman. Thank you, Mr. Chairman and members of the committee. I appreciate the opportunity to come before you. I bring uh, on the first page under modified structured rule, Senate Bill 8, and then if you turn the page over, almost down towards the end, Senate Resolution 7. These are companion bills. Senate uh, Resolution 7 is a constitutional amendment for the safe harbor of sexually exploited children. The enabling legislation that goes with it is Senate Bill 8. I appreciate the chairman. Um, chairman Weldon had over 10 hours of hearings and perfected these bills. I'm very appreciative to him and his committee to have worked so diligently. They uh, continue uh, the state's journey on protecting children as being victims sexually exploited and uh, preserving our safety net system. Senate Resolution 7 is the constitutional amendment that puts into effect an assessment on adult entertainment establishments to be able to uh, have a fund and it was copied after the uh, Brain and Spinal Injury Trust Fund. The purpose is, as I said, to continue the state's journey in rehabilitating these children that are taken off the streets that are sexually exploited. I'll be glad to answer any questions. And I appreciate the chairman working with me so diligently. Thank you. Mr. Hamilton. Thank you, Mr. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Senator Edmund, uh, I really like your bills. Uh, unfortunately, I, I have three bills in Senate rules that I really like also that have been languishing over there for several weeks. And in fact, 
Only yesterday did finally one of them move to Section 1. I was just wanting to know if there's anything that could be done to help move those bills forward. Over I'm the sure there is. You know, in the Health and Human Services Committee, I've passed about 25 House bills. I think it's more House bills than any other committee in the Senate. And uh, unfortunately, when I get the rules, I put those in preferential treatment because we work in conjunction with the House Health and Human Services. But since Chairman Mullis is one of my best friends, I'll be glad to speak to him on your behalf. Ms. Hunter, you better be careful being friends with Jeff Mullis. <laughs> <laughs> Believe me, we've had our ups and downs. No more questions. Thank you. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Y'all have a good day. Mr. Beach. Thank you, Mr. Chairman and members of the committee. I have two bills, uh, both of them in modified structure. The first is uh, Senate Bill 85, dealing with the development authorities. And then the second one, if you turn the page, is Senate Bill 125. It's a, a CERTA bill uh, dealing with tolls and managed lanes. So first off, I would like to ask for your consideration on SB 85. It's a development authority bill. Basically what it does, it clarifies the language of a project. Right now in the law, you've got a, a list of 13 categories. Then you have a definition of project, and it has caused a lot of inconsistency and confusion, and we would like to clarify that. Let me be very clear. This does not give de development authorities any more power than they have today. It doesn't do anything with that. It just, by taking these 13 categories out, we, elim we eliminate <laughs> frivolous lawsuits and litigation that is costing the, the state money. One of the things that the uh, chairman uh, of government affairs, Chairman Reiners, added on uh, lines 73 to 76, which I think strengthens this bill, is to add a member of the governing body to the development authority to a four-year term. So I think that strengthen it, th strengthens that by having a county commissioner or a member of a governing body on that development authority. So with that, I would ask for your consideration and answer any questions on SB 85. Mr. Setzler. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, to the Senator, um, someone brought to me a, a question or, and a concern about SB 85 that dealt with taxable bonds and non-taxable bonds. Um, the concern they brought was, and this, this is just a, a question, is there, is there anything in this bill that takes projects that would have in the past been taxable bonds that development authorities can issue and make them non-taxable? It does not. Is that, uh, I'll see you offline. But, but, but someone brought a specific point about this. And okay. We just wanted to clarify that for the members that that's. Yeah, okay. It does not. Mr. Goley. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Senator, the, um, I agree with you. I looked at the section uh, that was applicable. I'm over here. Oh. The, um, it, it, there is a conflict of laws where you have this enumerated list of uh, projects that are. Correct. Worthy, and then you have what's known as Section N, which w I would describe as a catch-all. It's a catch-all project list. Right. Yes, it's, sir. Well, it's a catch-all, but a catch-all equals essentially unlimited in terms of what the development authority um, determines. So it's an open-ended authority uh, without any limitation whatsoever. So there is a conflict. I know there's been some frivolous litigation in the Fulton County, and the Fulton County Development Authorities had to go, go ahead and defend those suits. And I get it in terms of the conflict and having to go to summary judgment all the time. The problem or the potential problem is the fact that by eliminating that entire list and going to Section N, which is the catch-all unlimited authority, what we're essentially doing then by what we are doing then is reaffirming the policy statement that we believe that these development authorities have unfettered, unlimited authority, which for some of us, if not more than some of us, is somewhat problematic because they're unelected, unaccountable. Uh, there's been a little more sunshine over the years cast on what these folks are doing. This has nothing to do with a parochial issue in Cobb County, by the way. But there is a, little, a level of discomfort about right. an unlimited, unfettered authority, which I understand is the way it is right now in terms of court rulings. But that does cause some discomfort. Wouldn't it be wiser to go ahead, look at it again, have broader authority for, for certain, but not unlimited authority? Right. What's your reaction to that? I, I don't think it does have unlimited authority. I think we can do, a de development authority can do what it wants to do right now with that section in. Right. 
That's, so, I that's mean, the point. So <laughs> all we're doing is taking the 13 categories out to eliminate the lawsuits. And we recently had a lawsuit where an attorney took the Atlanta Falcons to the Supreme Court cost the taxpayers a lot of money to defend that. We won it, and the stadium's going to go forward. But it was a frivolous lawsuit. I think he's also suing the Atlanta Braves in Cobb County. And I, I just would say to you, if we don't address this, uh, as soon as we issue the bonds for the Mercedes-Benz deal, he will file a lawsuit. And it'll, it'll delay the Mercedes-Benz deal, and it will also bring embarrassment to the state. I know there's a line on the wall there, so I'm not going to belabor so, the point. But I think we're on the same page as right. far as litigation goes. But there is the threshold policy statement of having that un unlimited, unfettered well, authority. I, I do think, uh, Unless the substitute has changed that. that, that with uh, line 73 to 76 and having an elected official on that governing, from the governing board, uh, on that board from the governing body, mm -hmm. I think really helps a lot as far as any kind of tax policies or, or anything. So thank you. Thank you. Ms. Smith. Thank you. Thank you for bringing us this bill. Actually, I'm going to the question of having an elected person on a development authority. In the past, when I worked with projects in my community, there had to be a definite separation of the elected officials from an entity such as a development authority. That's why they're created, is to give that one step removed. And I just want to be reassured that we have passed that scrutiny test. If we add somebody from a, an elected official to this board, are we compromising the purpose of the authority? Um, I'm not an attorney, so I'm not, I'm not totally sure. Um, I know we have chairman of judiciary. I would say, isn't it true that the, the test is does the governing body have control over the actions of the authority? Right. Correct. Yes. Okay. Thank you. No more questions. Next, uh, next. Would you, SB 125 is just a CERTA bill. It's a tollway bill that it brings managed lanes into the equation right now. We have an old model that's called the Georgia 400 model where you take 50 cent, you used to take 50 cents and throw in the, the bucket. Now with the 75 lanes that are going to be built south and the new I-75 north by Northwest Corridor, this brings managed lanes. Uh, into the statute so that we can have var variable pricing and, and manage the, the traffic flow. It also has some other things dealing with violations and it also has barriers because they're going to be reversible lanes and there's no policy on this. This is a, a good uh, tollway authority bill. If you have any questions? Ms. Jones. I just had one question I wanted yes, to clarify. And, and I, I uh, support <coughs> manage lanes very much. Does the bill allow managed lanes on existing capacity? No, it does not. Okay. It's all new capacity, and we're very specific about that. The I-85 project the was a demonstration project. Well, where in the bill does it, that's what, I had a couple questions. Where does it restrict it? It restricts it on, on current HOV lanes. So if it, if it restricts it on current HOV lanes, uh, it will not be added to, to that. We had a lot of discussion in committee on that. Like in current law or in this? It's in the bill. Uh, because we actually, in the first bill before the sub, we had that in there and we took it out because of the concern of the committee. Yeah. And um, I just got to find it. But I can tell you, it does not, it, it's all new capacity. I don't know what code section 46-54, I mean, maybe yeah, it's in the, ref, referred to indirectly. That was just a question I had. I yeah, I can just assure you that it is mind. not. And the only reason we did on 85, that was a demonstration project from the federal government. Oh, right, right. So sure. any other questions? It's good. Thank you. It's good, Bill. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. No more questions, thank you. He's left. We weren't done with you, apparently. Uh, Mr. Tippins. 
Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Members of the committee, I bring you a request for two bills this morning. The first is on the front page under modified open, the third from the last. This bill provides for uniform requirements for utility locating throughout the state of Georgia. These requirements are determined by statute, and this is overseen as it is currently by the PSC. This, uh, this bill gives uniformity so that the, 600, the 700 counties and municipalities all will not have conflicting utility locate laws. The current laws are working very well and are updated periodically as the need arises. No questions. Thank you. Wait a sec, wait a sec, wait a sec, wait a sec. Mr. Rogers. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Hello. Can you hear me? Yeah. Uh, Senator, who are we doing this bill for? I beg your pardon? Who are you doing this bill for? I was asked to bring the bill on behalf of Georgia utility contractors. The underground contractors? That's correct. But this bill applies to all utilities. Anyone digging in the in the ground is covered under the current uh, call before you dig laws, either on public or private property. So it applies to everyone. Further question, Mr. Chairman? Yes. Isn't this already regulated by the Public Service Commission? Yes, sir. It's already regulated, and there's a host of statute law that governs it, and it's very, very stringent. And I can say that as a utility contractor. Uh, we so are we utility, are adequate, you're sir. A utility contractor. I beg your pardon. Are you a utility contractor? Yes, sir. Okay, thank you. <laughs> no more questions. That's it. I've got one more bill, Mr. Chairman, if you would, on the back page, under modified structured Senate Bill 156. I bring this bill on behalf of the State Charter School Commission. They had requested that we give them authorization to create a 501c3 for the purpose of raising contributions, uh, both private and corporate, for the furtherance of giving toward the charter schools uh, that are under their purview. This gives them the authority to have their own nonprofit corporation. And this is a matter of convenience in terms of just the handling of these funds instead of having to use another foundation as a vehicle. They can currently raise these funds now legally. No questions now. Thank, Thank you, you, Mr. Chairman. Let me ask, on, on the wall, is anyone a member of the Natural Resources Committee in the Senate? to the front. That's it. <laughs> Mr. Chairman, members of the committee, it's good to be with you this morning. I come to request Senate Bill 82, which deals with the distribution of taxes on big trucks. As I mentioned yesterday, the system was changed. It is scheduled to go into, the new law is scheduled to go into effect on April the 1st. This bill would set a benchmark to ensure that no county is penalized and the $7 million additional that is collected would be distributed according to the new formula in the bill. No questions, thank you. Thank you. You, you have a 955 meeting that uh, got my Augusta Canal words in it, so y'all go take care of that. I, I'm on my way. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Ligon. Thank you, Mr. Chairman and members of the committee. On, under Modified Structured, on page two, I have a resolution and a bill. First, Senate Resolution 80, which uh, urges the College Board to return to a balanced presentation of history in our advanced placement history classes, and also encourages competition to, to help out with that. 
I'd be glad to answer any questions. No questions. Wait a second, wait a second, wait a second. Wait a second. Yeah, you didn't light up. You just, Mr. Rogers. Oh, sorry, sorry, Mr. Chairman. I double clicked. So, uh, Senator, just a point of um, personal privilege. I was on a study committee this past year, 2014, dealing with this issue. I wanted you to know I support your bill. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you. Other bill. Uh, Senate Bill uh, 116 to celebrate Freedom Week. It just encourages our schools to offer three hours of additional instruction on our founding principles during the week of Constitutional Week. No questions. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Alberts. Good morning, Mr. Chairman, members of the committee. I've got under modified structure rule page one, second from the bottom. Senate Bill 89, the Digital Classroom Act. This does three things. First, it allows the State Board of Education to recommend books both in paper as well as electronic media. Secondarily, it encourages, not mandates, but encourages schools to move toward electronic textbooks by the year 2020. And third, adds uh, important language from the House to make sure that we protect student uh, information and uh, privacy data. Any questions of Mr. Albers? No questions. Thank you. Thank you. Has, has anybody got any loud music that they'd like to play at this time? Dadgum, Jeff, I'm sorry. <laughs> Where do you think you're going? Mr. Chairman, won't you get to the front of the line? <laughs> well, it's a great day. Your Highness, you just go right no, in sir, and thank start. you. Thank you. We're glad to have you visit us the other day. Uh, I have Senate Bill 122 coming up, maybe. Oh, there it is. And um, I'll give you a quick story. Dade County, four years ago this April, had three tornadoes in Dade County. I think Northwest Georgia has become Tornado Alley. Not sure why, but it is. And this just uh, allows for another uh, splossed referendum, or a splossed referendum with this category on it, and that is to deal with natural disasters. No way to put a price on this. You never know what a natural disaster will, will do or cost, but Dade County's budget is $9 million. Their portion was over a million, so they're still struggling to pay for what they had to pay for back then. So this allows you to put it on the, uh, the local um, commission, to put it on their referendum in a natural disaster category and allow the people to decide if they want to do that or not. That's all in a nutshell, Mr. Chair. Well, Mr. Chairman, you know, I get hit up every day with my members that hey we sure are putting out a lot of senate bills and a lot of stuff is still down there in fact is one of my bills number five on, you have a uh, bill over there mr chair i wasn't aware that's uh, we we kind of camouflage those so that you won't know they're mine yeah i understand if your name's number second i don't think that has any bearing on that, does it <laughs> well mr uh, chair you know the committee work has been full of Wonderful house bills in there. It's, the floodgate has opened. The dam has broke. And uh, am, you know, I we got am I supposed to tell Mr. Smith thank you? Well, I haven't gotten that far yet. Okay. And uh, we'll have 26 house bills on the floor, and they're even meeting right now for another late arriving bill for a resolution from a house member in natural resources. But I dare say we'll have about 75 bills for uh, the 39th day. Well, that that would be perf perfect. <laughs> yeah, that'd be great, wouldn't it? Perfect. Perfect. However, 
I, I want y'all to be sure and go in early on that day and finish up all 75 of them rather than leaving about half of them well, to, to water out into the sea. <laughs> well, I know there's some wonderful house bills, and we enjoy working with our house <laughs> colleagues. But I'd say that they'd probably table a few, and then on the 40th day, while we're waiting on he in and she in and agreeing and not agreeing, that we would put a few house bills along the way. And uh, Chairman Smith, thank you for your uh, being open-minded and working with uh, issues that are important to Georgia and, and important to you to get it done right, so thank you. It sure has been a pleasure having you over here. Thank you, Mr. Chair, and you're welcome to the Senate rules anytime. We'll have coffee next time, okay? I'll bring my two numbers over there uh, since they're somewhere. Well, thank you. We enjoy working for, with the House this year, and uh, we'll have a great last couple of days. I think some of my membership want to speak with you. Mr. Rogers, you've talked to everybody. You might as well get him, too. No, I, no he seems to be missing part of his arm or something. I, you, you didn't have fireworks to eat when growing up, did you? That's an omen. <laughs> They're not working, just talk loud. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, um, Chairman Rules over there. Hey? What is the name of the song that you play when you march in? Which one? Which day? <laughs> Yesterday, we had a uh, country western. We had a request for country western, so we did Ace and a Ho by George Strait yesterday. Brick House, is that your request? We have a great song for day 39. You're going to love it. I expect to see you break dancing that day. It's going to be so nice. <laughs> Might hurt the other arm. <clears throat> Can you imagine Carl Rogers break dancing, Mr. Chair? No, no but uh, I think I need to remind myself that it's 10 minutes to 10. I'm sorry. Uh, I'm not going to put. put Dead gum, who's in charge of these things? Uh, I'm not going to put my committee under any undue influence, and uh, we'll just let you go on about your daily. Thank you, Mr. Work. Chair. And, and I'm happy on Senate Bill 122 to, to be a vehicle for many of those great House bills that had a, needed a different way. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Come see us. Ms. James. Okay. Uh, let me see. I think so. Get her a microphone. Good grief. Thank you. Honorable Chair, distinguished members of the rules, thank you very much for allowing me to come before you today. I don't see Senate Bill 176 on your blue sheet, but I understand it's on your yellow sheet. Uh, it is a bill that passed the Education Committee two days ago, and I have filled out the sheet. I hope that you will consider it uh, favorably because it is a bill that is called the DeAndre Thurman Act, uh, who was a 10th grader at a high school in my district, Creekside, and scrimmaging with another high school in my district, Banneker High School, and he lost his life. The autopsy showed that the brain injury and the uh, broken neck was a result of a bad helmet. And we did research. I've gotten 5,000 uh, signatures on petitions from community people and, and people from Fulton County Schools to ask that we use a four-star rating or higher on, and it's just strongly urging. It's not a mandate. So please consider it, and I'll answer any questions if you have it. And the four star, may I just add, uh, helps with uh, concussions. This bill has, uh, it will be, if you pass, it will be carried by Representative Mabra. Uh, 
and Dewey McLean and Douglas are going to speak on it if necessary. Mr. Roberts. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Just speak up, Jay. It, that, okay. They're not working. Yes, sir. It's the Virginia Tech model, that which is the standard model that has been used uh, by all high schools and colleges. Uh, you know, it's the standard one, even though there are other models. I, I don't think that they're the only ones that's using it, but, but uh, I do know that the bill says are higher. So it, it's a, and it's only a urging, a strongly encouraging. And it's a, a way to increase awareness and education uh, to many of the schools who are using less than a force rating. And, uh, and to, just to protect the children, it's shown that 53% uh, less concussions happen as a result. Okay, and, and, and uh, also, um, Mr. Ron Mabry and others have done the study and read all the studies, so I'd be happy to speak with you, but they have also read them and they can speak with you. Mr. McLean, thank you. Okay, no more questions. Thank, thank you so much. Mr. Gordon. Good morning, Mr. Chair and uh, members of the committee. I want to thank you for giving me time on this uh, obviously very hectic uh, rules agenda. But I would like to request that uh, HR 71 be taken into consideration to be voted on. Uh, it's, it's, I know we always kind of beat this in the ground. It's a simple bill, but it's actually a, a simple bill. It's a House Study Committee to look at uh, critical need jobs in, in Georgia and any in incentives that could uh, perhaps be given to uh, Hope Scholarship recipients if they should decide to, uh, to pursue those degrees of, um, of, of concentration. Uh, uh, Mark Butler has been very helpful with it, our, our labor commissioner, as well as uh, the chairman of, of higher ed and the uh, dean of the house, uh, Calvin Smyrie, and really the whole higher education committee in general has just been a, been a wealth of help and knowledge as it relates to crafting this bill. This bill has probably been, uh, been whittled down five or six times, but I think that we've got, uh, got a good piece of, of legislation and good representation uh, on the committee as it relates to four members of, uh, of, of the House, uh, one from Georgia Student Finance, one from the Technical System of Georgia, and one from the Border Regions. And again, it's not uh, insisting on any uh, in incentivation, it's just having the opportunity to study to see if it's something that may help Georgia uh, to be a, um, a continue to be a, a strong economic development uh, vehicle for our side of the side of the country. No questions. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, everybody. Now, Mr. Stone. Good morning, Mr. Chairman, committee members. I've returned to ask for your compassionate consideration of th three bills, all under modified structure rule. Uh, the first one is the third uh, from the top of modified structure on page one, SB 65. This bill uh, implements a study committee recommendation adjusting what's known as the wild card exemption. Uh, this is uh, the first adjustment in that particular exemption 
in approximately 30 years. In addition, uh, there are provisions uh, that this bill carries uh, that have been added in the House that deal with both the uh, enforcement of foreign judgments, uh, bulk sales act repeal, and uh, uh, bringing Georgia's code up to date on the Uniform Voidable Transfers Act. So um, uh, be happy to answer questions about that bill now or at the end. If there are no questions, on page two, uh, fourth from the top is SB 111. This bill deals with continuing care retirement uh, communities. Uh, we uh, presented it yesterday, but I'll be happy to answer any questions. It simply expands the authority of CCRCs to uh, provide home health care services under existing Georgia uh, licensing and regulations. No questions. Go to the next one. Then further down, um, SB 154, which is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, from the bottom of open uh, modified uh, structured rule, is SB 154. This is a bill that the uh, prosecutors in Georgia have requested. It, uh, the main part of this bill uh, legalizes use of body cameras uh, in the lawful execution of law enforcement duties uh, in areas where they're not permitted now. For example, uh, calls for domestic uh, disturbances, uh, when they show up, now they have to turn the body cam off and, and go to audio only. Uh, this will improve law enforcement and is a, um, uh, uh, approved by all segments, uh, including the defense bar. I'd be happy to answer any questions about any of the bills. No questions, thank you. And I would like to say it's been a pleasure working with House members in my committee. We started immediately after uh, crossover and were able to finish up all the bills, perfecting them along the way. Um, well, I, I tell you what, I'll just go ahead and put all three of yours on for tomorrow. I mean, for thank you, sir. Years. Okay. <laughs> Good morning, Mr. Chairman and Committee. Thank you for allowing me to come and present this morning. I'd like to begin by stating that uh, we've got HV277 on the floor, Mr. Chairman, that uh, I know you're one of the signers on. I have the privilege of carrying that bill this morning. Uh, I'm comfortable that our rules over in Senate also is uh, freeing up 316, which uh, you're a signer on that bill and I'll be carrying as well. The bill this morning that I'm requesting is Senate Bill 130, which is on the back page of Modified Structure Rule. It's a Smoke-Free Cars for Children Act. Uh, as it moved from our Senate over into the House, I appreciate the Chairman Setzler, Chairman Golick, and Chairman Cooper who helped to perfect that bill. Um, simply states that we want to prevent smoking in a car when a child is present. I answer any questions and appreciate your consideration, sir. No questions. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Jones. Thank you, Mr. Chairman and members of this committee. I request your respectful consideration for two bills. The first bill is on a modified structure on the back page, Senate Bill 164, that deals with PBIS, positive behavior intervention and support in classrooms to allow systems uh, an opportunity to change their climate and culture. Uh, and let me thank uh, Chairman Nix for uh, working with me so diligently on this particular legislation and coming out of his committee. The uh, second bill, if I may, Mr. Chairman, is not on this list. It's Senate Bill 141 that came out of Public Safety Committee, House Public Safety Committee, late yesterday. And it's received full support from the Chairman. And let me just thank publicly uh, Chairman Powell for his work on 141. Uh, Senate Bill 141 deals with zero tolerance and weapons in classrooms for children. It was language that was on the books for the past six years, but due to some unintended consequences from two bills that passed last year, it wiped this language off the books and uh, 
uh, Senate Bill 141 simply puts that language uh, back on the books, uh, dealing with kids and giving them a second chance for bringing a weapon uh, unintentionally to class without any intent to do anyone any harm. Okay. Chairman Powell, is that the one you sent back and worked on? Yes. Okay. Thank you. No questions. Thank you, Mr. Chairman and members of the committee. Mr. Kennedy. Good morning, Mr. Chairman, and good morning to the committee. I bring to you this morning Senate Bill 99, which is at the bottom of page one under the modified structure rule. This bill deals with a section from the criminal code that provides that in the event that there is a comment made by a trial judge uh, during the course of the trial as to the guilt of the accused or on a material fact issue, then it mandates a reversal by the appellate courts. This bill provides some changes so that it would do, in, in essence, two things. It would obligate counsel to object and bring to the court's attention whatever the offending language is. And number two, in the event that the offensive language relates to a material fact issue, it would provide that the court could provide cu curative instructions. This would um, prevent what really is uh, would be needless retrials of cases and um, while preserving the rights of uh, in the trial process also help greatly judicial economy. No questions. Thank you, sir. Mr. Hightower. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I apologize for the delay. I was in a meeting downstairs. On uh, page one, HR 767. Uh, this is uh, a House resolution putting together a study committee uh, to study the effects of uh, day providing services for those with disabilities. Uh, this is a great concern to me personally. I have a cousin with Down syndrome. I have an uncle who runs one of these day programs, and they have had a, a study committee look at their needs and concerns in about uh, two decades, and so that's what this would do. Calls for five committee meetings, I think. I'll ask any, answer any questions. Any questions? Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Okay. Is that PK? Is that you? Williams. Williams, yes, sir. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Chairman, members of the committee. I have two bills. The first one is uh, the first Senate bill underneath modified rules, Senate Bill 95. Uh, this bill allows real estate brokers to place money they have received in trust or escrow in an account at a financial institution. And then also uh, underneath modified structure rule, SB 160, which uh, just adds additional guidance to law enforcement and clarity on how to handle underage drinking. So SB 95 and SB 160. Any questions? No questions, thank you. Thank you. Mr. Dugan. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, members of the committee. Being respectful of your time, I'm going to be as brief as I possibly can and, and let you all ask questions. Um, modified structure, second page, Senate Bill 104. All this does uh, within the State Depository Board. It pulls the insurance commissioner off the board at his request and strikes language of an association that no longer exists within the United States. The second bill I'd like to discuss is Senate Bill 132. As you well know, the uh, pro tem introduced this legislation to enable this whole process to start a few years ago. There was obstacles that popped up along the way to um, make it not as um, inclusive as maybe we wanted it to. All this bill does is kind of remove some of those barriers and increases the capacity for a greater number of students to participate in the dual enrollment program. No questions. And Mr. Chairman, if I could speak out of turn for a second. House Resolution 767 on the front page under modified open rule. It'd be great for the most disadvantaged citizens that we have within the state. Thank you. Mr. Martin. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I'm here again today to uh, 
to present SB 108. It's on the second page, second from the top. It's the insurance department rule. This would, uh, this would help the insurance commissioner greatly with his friends over at the National Association of Insurance Commissioners, create stronger regulations on large insurance carriers, you have to dig deeper, into, dig deeper into their balance sheets, and provide an annual report to the insurance commissioner. Uh, if there are any questions, I'm glad to answer them. Any questions? Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Hill. Mr. Chairman, members of the committee, um, thanks for your time. Also, thanks for putting Senate Bill 63 on the floor yesterday. I come today on uh, Modified Structure Rule Senate Bill 59. It is the uh, Partnership for um, Public Facilities and Infrastructure Act. We, we have a public-private partnership bill on the books for transportation and for water, and this is for vertical construction, um, and it's going to um, bring together a group of people to create guidelines um, for creating the way forward for public-private partnerships for state agencies and state um, and for counties and cities, local governments. Any questions? My, yep, got a question. Mr. Hamilton. Yes, Mr. Chairman, that's a great amendment that we support. No other questions. Thank you. And then, Mr. Mr. Chairman, on uh, modified open rules, Senate Bill 203 that Chairman Yates is carrying, it's the World War I Centennial Commission as well. Okay. So, thank you for your time. Thank you. Ms. Ora. Good morning, Mr. Chairman. Thank you very much. Uh, committee members, I'm here to request uh, Senate Bill 109 under modified structured rule. That is the bill that codifies and strengthens our statute on the physician's order for life-sustaining treatment. Be happy to answer any questions. We've, I know we've discussed it before, so I won't take up a lot of time. No questions. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Yep, I'm going to recognize Mr. Golick here for a second. Yep. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, on Senate Bill 139, which is on the floor today, uh, pursuant to the rule, I'm going to ask the committee to limit debate to no more than one hour, inclusive of the opening and closing 20. Senate Bill 139, the plastic seed. That's plastic the uh, bag bill. <laughs> bag bill? The bag bill. Okay. Uh, and, and you've heard Mr. Gullick's recommendation. It's Friday. <laughs> <laughs> All those in favor of limiting the debate on 139, raise your hand. All those opposed? The limit will stand. Okay. Uh, Mr. Smyrey. Okay. Mr. Benton.
Ms. Smith. Mr. Hamilton. Stevens. Mr. Chairman, on the front page, HR 724, Representative Pax, um, Cybersecurity. I'd like to put my name beside that. Of course, Senate Bill 85. Mr. Rice. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. The uh, second page, SR 80, Senator Ligon's College Board Advanced Placement U.S. History uh, uh, bill, uh, Resolution. A lot of people worked on that in the Education Committee, uh, and it's a great bill now. I'd also like to ask for uh, Senate Bill 82. What was the first one, Tom? SRE. Okay. Mr. Dixon. I have to put my name aside. Senate Bills 109, 156, and 164. Mr. Morris. Yes, sir, Mr. Chairman. I have a lot to ask for consideration for Senate Bill 95. Ms. Cooper. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I like to ask for on the first page Senate Bill 8 that's the one with crimes against children that have been sexually exploited and there's a on the back page a companion resolution Senate Resolution 7 and I'd also like to put my name by Senate Bill 130 and on the back page in Senate Bill 109 thank you what was the last one 109 back page Senate Bill 109 Senator Oryx Bill Mr. Knight Mr. Rogers. Can it, is it? I'll just I'll just put you down on everything I want. Ms. Hughley. Abrams. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I would also like to request consideration of H.R. 71, which appears to be one of those hallowed job creation bills that we love so much in this body. Uh, I'd also ask for your consideration of SB, SB 8, SR 7, SB 164, and SB 109. You know, sometimes I think y'all got numbers I don't have. Would you do the, I got SB8 and SR7. I got it. Got it. Okay. 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 Mr. Powell.
Okay. All right. First thing, we're going to set a supplemental calendar for today. <laughs> the vice chair is heavy breathing and deep sighing up here. Yeah, Friday, there's no football tonight, is there? <laughs> what? There's no football tonight, is there? <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm just going with what I know. Uh, supplemental calendar under structured rule SB82. Any opposition? It's on. Yeah. All right, this is the calendar for Tuesday. See how see how long that took, Larry? You would slept right through that. All right. And and uh th there is uh we'll try to do a lot. There'll be other opportunities. Modified open HR seventy one. Any opposition? Modified open HR 618. Any opposition? Modified open HR 767. Any opposition? Modified open SB 95. Any opposition? Modified structure SB 8. Any opposition? Modified structure SB sixty five. Any opposition? Modified structure SB eighty nine. Any opposition? Modified structure SB one oh four. Any opposition? It's on um, modified structure SB 108. Any opposition? It's on um, modified structure SB 109. Any opposition? Listen up. Under structured, I am moving SB 111 to structured. Any opposition to me moving it? Too bad. Uh, it, so under structure, you'll have SB 111. Any opposition? Under modified structure, SB 125. Any opposition? Modified structure, SB 132. Any opposition? It's on. Um, Modified structure SB 154. Any opposition? It's on. Uh, modified structure SB 160. Any opposition? What is it? Okay. On, on your. Let me redo that for one second on your desk. You've got AM 390129. Uh, amendment, Mr. Roberts. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. We added this amendment on the House bill that went over to the Senate. And another avenue by which we can do it. Uh, the only change in the original amendment versus this one is your request to go to at least 7,500 square feet in the facility. We didn't have a problem with that. This takes care of the local issues back home for a while. Let's create two. All right, you've got the amendment and a move on it. Any opposition to the amendment? All right, the amendment be on the floor. And then let's go back to SB 60. I think I put it on anyway already, but go under modified structure SB 160. 
any opposition in its own modified structure SR7 any opposition its own under structure you think we need to give Mullis his bill all right under structure at SB 122 yeah uh, boy that wasn't okay any opposition its own let me say this before we all make a mad dash out of here I'd be willing to bet you that there's a supplemental. I ain't going to say nothing about today. I'm saying probably Tuesday. Y'all have a good one. Hey, John. Wait, hold on, hold on, hold on. I'm not done. Uh, it's it's modified structure. You would have to, you'd have to have an amendment in here, I, and and I need to see you. Now we're done. <laughs>